Hello everyone, this is Geetanjali. In the last video, we did incomplete dominance and in this video, we'll be doing co-dominance. So the example that we take for co to understand co-dominance is the blood grouping system in humans, that is the ABO blood grouping system. And uh, we know that uh, the blood grouping system is actually devised on the basis of the antigens that are present on our RBCs, right? So the antigens can be of two types, that is antigen A or antigen B. If we have antigen A, then our blood group is said to be A. And when we have B, we'll have B blood group. And when we have neither of them, we'll have O blood group. And when we have both of them, we have AB blood group. So we know this, right? Now, this blood grouping system is also a famous example for multiple allelism. Okay, what is multiple allelism? Multiple allelism is a allelism is a condition in which a trait is controlled by more than two alleles. So this blood group which is there it is actually determined by our antigens as I told you and this uh, antigens the kind of antigen that is being produced A or B is determined by our gene okay so this gene has three alleles okay instead of two that we usually see and in these alleles only two of them are present okay two alleles present As we know, we are diploid, so only two of them will be present. So there are three types, but only two alleles will be present. So let us see what are these three types. So we have one small i, G, uh, small i allele, and capital I, A, and then capital I, B. So as we already know the rules um, of the convention to represent alleles, if it's small, letter then it usually refers to recessive allele and when there are big letters it is usually dominant so this is also the same case here so uh, ia and ib are dominant and this small i is recessive so this one it produces a antigen okay it is the gene which encodes for a antigen and this is the uh, alley, I mean, gene which encodes for B antigen. Okay, and this is the gene which encodes for neither of them, nor A nor B. Okay, so let us see. Depending on the type of allele present, what will be the resultant blood group? Okay, so if we have both of them as dominant A alleles, then pretty obvious your resultant blood group will be A right now if we have both dominant a and b together we, we know that both of them are dominant so both of them will express themselves and will get a result in red group as a b okay so you see here both of them are expressing themselves equally right without any uh, sort of interference so the RBC surface will contain both A antigens and B antigens and the resultant group will be AB. Now in the next one you see here we have a gene which does not produce anything and here we have a gene which produces A antigen. So in this case it doesn't matter uh, when we if we have a gene which does not produce anything because we have one functional gene and that much is enough. So this will again lead to a blood group itself so here again we find two dominant genes so both of them will express themselves completely and will find a b blood group so uh, this thing is what we call co-dominance okay so co-dominance means what both of them express themselves completely okay without uh, any uh, independently without any interference so here again we have example of two dominant gene which will obviously give rise to the dominant character that is the B 
dot group. Now we have again B and one non-functional uh, this gene. Here doesn't matter, you'll still get B blood group. Now, in this case, you see here we have a gene which does not code for anything. Here also the allele that does not code for anything. Now, this will result into a blood group in which uh, there is no antigen present in the RBC, okay, uh, on the RBC surface. So, this blood group, we call it as O blood group, okay. So, in this, the person will not have any antigen on his RBC surface, right? Now, this uh, is a classic example of multiple allism and also codominance. Now, moving on to another interesting topic that is pleiotropy. Okay, pleiotropy is again a condition in which we see that a single gene is responsible for more than one effect in the body right so here we see a single uh, let us say this single allele is responsible for the formation of antigen a on the rbc surface but here in this case uh, a single gene will uh, give rise to many um, effects so let us see an example one b gene is seen in is seen in peace okay so what does this do let us see we know there will there are usually three variants okay one uh, that is homozygous dominant homozygous recessive and heterozygous dominant so in this case let us see what happens so when we have homozygous condition where both the dominant alleles are present the grain size that we see in peas is big okay and when it's recessive it's small and the green shape that we see here is round for dominant and wrinkled for recessive and this start synthesizing capacity is more for the dominant one and less for the recessive one. Now let us see uh, the case of heterozygous, which is a bit interesting. So the grain size here will be intermediate, but the grain shape will be still round okay and the synthesizing capacity is also intermediate so you can see here that this b gene it affects three things okay one is the grain size grain shape and then the starch synthesizing capacity okay and there's also one uh, example of incomplete dominance over here in these two cases in these two cases you find incomplete dominance right so in this one intermediate character is achieved in the middle Whereas here you, you find complete dominance. So we uh, usually such uh, combinations are possible and it is seen in peace. And this is uh, an example of pleiotropy and also complete dominance and incomplete dominance.